welcome to our video tutorial for this tuxedo cat bandana that you can see Melba wearing here. She looks very smart. So hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this tuxedo cat bandana, you'll need at least two colours. Um, I'm going to recommend that you have a darker colour and a lighter colour. I'm going super traditional. I'm having this black with a sheen through it. Um, it's probably about a four weight weight. It's an acrylic. I'm going to use that for my tuxedo part. And this one here is about a five weight. It's a wool... Um, acrylic blend. I'm going to use that for my shirt portion. So you need at least two colors probably with a good contrast and then if you want to add a third color in for your bow tie you can do that. Um, you could make a black you know the same color bow tie as your tuxedo but I'm going to take the opportunity to add some color in which I love to do and I'm going to use this bright cherry red which is also an acrylic wool blend with a sheen through it. So I'm going to use that for my bow tie. Now you'll need um, at least one crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn and I'm actually going to go for my 5mm for the main uh, tuxedo and shirt part and then I'm going to use this 4mm for my bow tie. So you can just use the same size hook for the whole project. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that up a little bit but that's up to you. You'll need uh, two buttons that are the same for the shirt um, buttons. Now I've got these two uh, bright red hearts that I'm still 50-50 whether I'm going to use but they match perfectly to my my bow tie colour so I'm thinking I might use those on the shirt otherwise I'll delve back into my button stash and get two black ones for the shirt buttons if this doesn't look uh, quite right. So we'll see how we go with that. Then you'll need a button uh, for you know to do it up at the back behind the neck so um, that one can be a slightly larger button than your shirt buttons. You'll need some scissors to snip your ends. You'll need at least a darning needle to weave in your ends. And then you'll probably want a smaller gauge needle to sew on your buttons and to sew your bow tie to the tuxedo part. And then finally you'll need a tape measure to get a general idea of your cat's neck circumference. Now I'll include a guide in the description box below to general cat neck circumference sizes, just for, you know, standard sizes. So you can use that as your guide or you can take a measurement of your cat's neck. Okay, so here's one I've made previously in a charcoal gray, a lighter gray, and this brick red for the bow tie. So, um, yeah, it's, this is definitely beginner friendly. The only real crochet stitch that you need to know is single crochet um, and then a single crochet decrease. But um, the techniques are, you know, slip knot onto your hook, creating a chain, single crochet, single crochet decrease, and then it's just a simple matter of sewing the pieces together. So um, you're sewing the bow tie onto the main part of the tuxedo, sewing on the buttons, and then sewing on your button that does up behind the neck here. So this is just a simple button up design. You don't need to put it over your cat's head. Um, so it's easy to put on. So yeah, definitely beginner friendly and super cute. So let's get started. Okay, so just before we get started, I'll just tell you the, the sequence of how we're gonna make this. So we're gonna start with these two pieces here. So this piece and this piece uh, two separate pieces. So we're going to make two exactly the same of this these two pieces. Then we're going to attach those two pieces with this area here. So they're just attached across the middle here. And then we're going to make our little collar pieces. So we'll go on and make the shirt. And then we're going to make our two little collar pieces and we're going to attach those onto the onto this piece here. And then we're going to make the, the bow tie and attach that on okay so we're starting with these two areas here so take your darker color and make a slip knot onto your hook now depending on the yarn that you're using the size of the hook that you're using um, you can tailor this this chain and this width to um, you know whatever whatever width you want now the width that I've done there, and just bearing in mind we add a single crochet border, so the width I've done there 
is about two centimeters with just the crochet part so I'm going to or just the you know the central part so I'm going to chain three and I'm going to work with that chain okay now you you probably will want to chain somewhere between um, three like I'm doing or five you know depending on the yarn you're using and depending on the hook size that you've got so skip that first chain and then single crochet into the next chain and then into the next chain. So you just single crochet in each chain until you reach the end of your row. And we're just gonna do that chain one and turn, and we're just gonna do that one single crochet in each stitch until we reach the length that we want, okay? So chain one, And just single crochet one in each stitch okay so you can see we're starting to create this area here now this one I made for a cat that's bigger than Melba so I've done these quite long but I'm gonna go probably for about five centimeters Melba's next circumference is about 24 centimeters now you obviously don't want to go too short but you don't want to go too too long either but you can adjust it quite easily with the where you place your button at the um, at the neck so you can adjust you've got some leeway with the sizing so now let me tell you how long I went on this one this one's made for a cat that's got a neck circumference sort of about 28 centimeters and you can see that I've put the button um, you know quite a long way from the edge here so I've got plenty of leeway um, this one I went for about nine or ten centimeters before I started to increase here so I'm gonna go for about six or seven for Melba now that's kind of arbitrary you will need to kind of work out what you need but like I said it's better to go slightly longer than it is to go shorter so for a small cat you're probably looking at, at doing this for about a five centimeter length let's see how much I've got there already yeah I've got about five centimeters there already and for a larger cat you'd be looking at doing you know uh, up to about sort of 10 or 12 centimeters for this this portion so again I can't give you an exact um, exact length for that you'll just have to kind of work out that on your own but if I can give you that guide for a you know for a smaller cat let's say a 19 centimeter up to about 23 24 centimeter neck circumference sort of five to seven centimeters for this this section and for a larger cat I don't know let's say 28 up to about 30 centimeters you would you would do um, you know say 10 to 12 centimeters so maybe it may be a little bit less maybe 9 to 10 okay so and then medium would be somewhere in the middle okay um, again arbitrary there's you know just some things that I can't say that I can't um, put into these patterns that are exact you've got to kind of work out what you need for your individual cat for your yarn and for your hook size so I think I'm probably getting pretty close to where I want to be here I'll do let's do just a couple more rows like I said I prefer to go slightly larger than slightly smaller okay so I think that's going to be okay. Let's just do one more quick measurement. Yeah, seven centimeters. I think that's going to be fine. So I'm going to start increasing now. So chain one and turn, and then place two single crochets into that first stitch. And then one single crochet in the last so we're just going to increase on one side so if you can picture what we're doing here so we've come down this end this this here and we're going to start to create this increased little foot here okay so we just increase on one side so chain one and turn 
one single crochet in that first stitch, one in the next, and then an increase right at that end, depending on how many stitches you've got, increase on the last stitch. Chain one and turn, two in that first stitch, and then one each in the next stitches. So just increasing on this one edge, on this one end, chain one and turn. Now for how long you you increase for is also kind of arbitrary. It will depend on, you know, all of those factors that I've mentioned before. Size of your cat. So two in here. So I'm going to keep increasing for a couple more rows and you, you do the same, you do to where you think. Um, let me tell you how wide I increased to on this one. I increased to about five centimeters. Okay. So you can increase a little bit more than that if you want to, or you can um, go about that. Now you can, you can also tailor here. So when you sew these two bits together, you can also tailor how wide you make this area. So that also adds some um, extra, you know, little bit of size to the next circumference if you need to here. So you can decide that as well. So it's a little bit tricky because when you've got these sort of, you know, you, it, it's not a circle. So it's a bit hard to measure the circumference exactly. So that's why it's a little bit tricky. You kind of have to approximate the sizing. So I already know that I've got, so Melba's next circumference is about 24 centimeters. So I know I've got about seven centimeters here. I know I'm gonna have seven centimeters on the other side. And if I make this about five centimeters, I'm gonna have five centimeters on the other side. So that's a total of seven and seven, 14, and 10, 24. And then I know that I'm just gonna be able to leave a little bit of extra here that so it uh, is not too tight okay and then I've still got leeway to adjust with the button okay so I'm hoping that that all kind of makes sense the trickiest part of this one is definitely not the stitches it's the just it's that sizing around the neck so I'm just going to go for a couple more rows so I'll pause here you you go to where you think you need just you know do those little calculations in your head and uh, I'll be back shortly. Okay, now once you've got it to where you want it to be, you'll just, uh, oops, I've made a chain there, I don't need to. You'll just yarn over, pull through, and tie off. So just snip your end. And then you'll make exactly the same thing a second time. So I'm going to do that, and I'll meet you shortly. Okay, so once you have your two pieces, we're going to join these two together. Okay, so you'll tie on to one of your edges. Now, so how I tie on, I just do it in a really simple way, is we just wrap the yarn over the hook, pull through, and then chain one. And then just tighten that end. Um, so now I chain one again just to give me that extra height and we're just going to work across so I'm going to go back into that same stitch and I'm going to work in my tail as I go I'm going to go back into that same stitch I tied onto and make a single crochet and then I'm going to single crochet one in each stitch all the way along my first side working in that tail as I go so all the way across okay let's say I've worked in enough tail there just gonna snip snip that off so you can weave in your tails at the end if you prefer. I like to work mine in as I go, wherever I can. Now, 
here you're going to make a chain now this chain can be um, whatever length you want but you'll just have to take into consideration the neck circumference here again okay so as I said before I've got seven and seven I've got five centimeters here approximately so that's 24 for Melba and then I'm going to add that extra you know sort of two centimeters of um, leeway for her neck circumference so I'm going to chain one, two, I think I'll chain three to get me across to the other side. And that's going to be plenty. So that's going to give 27 centimetres, um, which, you know, is plenty for Melba. And then I can just adjust it with where I sew on my button. Okay, so then we're going to start to work into the other side. Find that first stitch, there it is. So you'll just join onto the other side and work one single crochet in each stitch all the way along to the end. Okay, so it's pretty much that simple. Just to join those two pieces together. And then we're going to do two more rows of just one single crochet in each stitch so chain one and turn so work back again one more time and then again a third time just one single crochet in each stitch and then when you get to the chain just one single crochet in each chain oh, I've twisted slightly there one single crochet in each chain and I'll meet you once we get to that end of that third row in this light color. So I'll see you shortly. Now actually just to mention, if you're making this for a smaller cat, you could just do two rows here because you might not want the, um, you know, the bandana to be as long as... I'm going to make mine here. So if you if you're making this for a smaller cat, you can just you know like under under Melba's size, so under about 24 centimeter neck. You might want to make this a bit smaller. So you could just do two rows here instead of this third one. Okay, so just just keep those things in mind, depending on your the size of your cat. I'm just about finished here, so I'm going to finish off this, this third row, and I'll be with you shortly. We'll start to decrease. Okay, so I've done my three rows there, and we're just going to chain one and turn. So now we're going to be doing our decreases to uh, create this shape here. Okay, so we're going to decrease at each end. So we're going to single crochet decrease. So insert your hook into the first stitch, pull up a loop. And then insert your, your hook into the second stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all three. Oops, split yarn. So that's a single crochet decrease. And then we're just going to do our one single crochet in each stitch all the way along to the end. And then in these last two stitches, we're going to single crochet decrease as well. Okay, so that's basically how the rest of this will go, is we'll will decrease in the beginning and the end of each row or at the beginning and at the end of each row until you reach this point here okay now I haven't decreased right down to just one stitch I've left this a little bit flat across the edge here so I've left one one two three stitches at the the bottom there okay so I decreased until I got to this this area here you could make it to a point if you wanted to I prefer this look where it's a little bit rounded so that's entirely up to you and I'm going to keep going and, and continue with my decreases until I get to where I want to be so you do the same just remembering that one decrease at the beginning and the end of each row and then just one single crochet in each stitch in between so I'll see you shortly and just to show you the end of this last of this first row, I'm single crochet decreasing in those last two stitches, and then I'm chaining one and I turn, and I'll single crochet decrease in those first two stitches. 
and then I'll continue on. So see you soon. Okay, so I'm down to two stitches at the end here, and that's where I'm going to finish off. So you can just tie off here. Okay, so that's the main part of our tuxedo done. Now we're going to just start to do all the little bits and pieces that we need to do to complete this little bandana. So we're going to make these little these little pieces here, these little triangles, just to add that little tuxedo feel. So to do that, we're just going to slip knot onto the hook. And then we're going to chain two. And then we're going to place two single crochets in that second chain. Chain one and turn. And then we're going to place two single crochets in each of those stitches. One and two. And then in the second one, also two. So now you have four stitches and then chain one and turn and we're going to increase again on each end so in that first stitch two single crochets in the middle two stitches just one single crochet and then in that last stitch we'll increase again so two single crochets Okay, now you can go for another row if you wanted to, to make these slightly bigger, but you want them to be, you know, able to fit when you sew them on, you want them to be able to fit in this area here. So I think that's going to work quite nicely. Or maybe, should I do, yeah, I'm going to do one more row. So I'm just going to chain one and turn and two single crochets in that first, one single crochet in each of the center stitches and then two single crochets in the last one and two so let's see where we're at yeah that's going to be perfect so you can go again even for one more row if you're making a you know much bigger tuxedo than I am you could have stopped at that previous row so again you've just got to tailor that to what you want now leave a long tail here so you you can sew these onto the tuxedo so I'm going to leave a good long tail and you'll go ahead and you'll make exactly the same again for the other side so you go ahead oops you go ahead and do that and I'll make mine and I'll be back shortly okay so I've got my two little collar pieces there now finally our last piece is to make the bow so I'm going to change my hook to my four millimeter and I'm going to take my colorful yarn and make a slip knot now, you can tailor this bow to the size that you want it to be. We're basically just making a single crochet rectangle. So I'm going to chain nine, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now you can chain less than that. You can chain more than that. This is how wide your bow tie is going to be. Okay, so just looking on my other one here. This is, so we're looking at this width here. So you can make a wider bow tie, you can make a narrower bow tie. It's entirely up to you. So basically we're just making a rectangle and then we'll add this central area here to make it into a bow shape. So skip that first chain and just single crochet in the second chain and then in each chain until you reach the end of your row. And then you'll just do single crochet rows with a chain one and turn until you create the size of the rectangle that you want. So these, this is the long edge 
and it's you know it'll be the the number of rows will correspond to the height of the bow tie so chain one and turn so you're probably looking at two to three rows depending on your size of your tuxedo I'm going to do I think I'll do three rows so this is my second row and I'll end up doing probably one more row and I'll meet you once I've finished that okay so there I have my rectangle for my bow tie so um, if I can give you the dimensions that I've gone for here is about six centimeters by about two and a half centimeters Okay, so you, you can definitely make a bigger one or a smaller one depending on what you prefer. So now we're just going to yarn over, pull through and tie off. So just a super simple bow. And then we're going to actually make this into a bow using a length of yarn. So have a good length. So you want a, a good amount of length because you need it to sew the bow tie onto the tuxedo so then just so I've got you know a good length of yarn I'll just snip off a good length and then place the center of that that uh, length in the center of your bow tie so make sure you've got it right in the center there and you're just going to start wrapping so what I tend to do is I wrap those tails out of the way. I wrap one and actually you could weave in your tails before you do this. It's probably that's probably going to be a bit a bit easier, but I'm gonna continue on here and I'll do it after. So I just wrap one one in one direction and then I wrap the other in the opposite direction. Two in the same number of wraps. So then I finish on the underside of the bow and then I tie so pull it nice and tight so you've got a nice bow shape and then I just tie a simple knot at the back so just check you've got your bow how you want it to sit before you finalize anything there so I might need to bring mine slightly to the center a little bit more yeah it's pretty cute. So tie a simple double knot at the back. So that's nice and secure. And then you've got your ends to sew in. Now I'm going to go ahead and weave in these tail ends now. Like I said, I it's probably best to do this before you create the bow, but it doesn't matter too much. So I'll just show you weaving in one end. And then you can go ahead and do the other one as well. So you just, you know, weave into the back of the bow. So I just use these to kind of shape my edges a little bit too. And then I'll sew down into the back here, or just weaving into the back here. So I'm going to kind of assume that you know how to weave in an end. And yeah, just just be aware that you're shaping also the, those two corners there, or your corner. So just keep it in alignment to the shape of your other edges. And let's just go through a little bit more. Love the shiny red. It's going to look super cute. Okay, so once you've woven through enough... Just snip off that excess and go ahead and do the second one and I'll do the same and we'll be back shortly. Okay, so there I've got all my pieces. I've got my two little collar pieces. I've got my bow tie and I've got my main bandana. So we're just going to do a couple of things to um, finish off here. Now we're going to make a border. Now what I do is I first make... A white border on this part here okay just because it makes it a little bit neater so when you're putting a dark color into this light color it can look a bit messy because you haven't got stitches to um, to follow along here so, okay so what I tend to do is I'll, I'll just tie on to one of these sides here with a 
yeah, I'll put that, I'll uh, work that tail end in, end in later. So I'm just going to tie on here, just as I did before. So there's lots of ways to tie on, so you can just tie on in your own way. Chain one. And then I'm just going to put a stitch back into where I've tied on. And I'm going to do single crochets, evenly spaced, I'll work in my tail as I go, evenly spaced my white tail, evenly spaced single crochets all the way along this edge. And it'll just help make the edging a little bit neater. Because we've got those decreases in each of the rows along here, if we just put the black straight in, it's going to look a little bit messy. So try, actually, try not to get those big holes like I've just done there. I need to actually work more into the, more into the, in between the stitches. Okay. So just evenly spaced single crochets all the way down these sides. So go ahead and, and continue. I'm going to just make sure I fix up those little holes a little bit. And uh, so work your way all the way down until you get back to this other edge of the white area. And uh, I'll meet you once I've done that. I'm going to work in that second tail as I go. And I'm going to, um, yeah, I'll meet you once I've done that. Okay, so I've done that there, and I'm just going to yarn over and pull through, leaving a tail. And now we're going to add our, our black border all the way around to tidy this up. Okay, so you can tie on again wherever you want to. I'm going to tie on in the same area that I did before. And then We're just going to work the black border all the way around. So now we've got those stitches to work into along the white area. That's going to be much easier. So it's just a single crochet border. So one in each stitch as you move around this edge. I'm working in my two tails there as I go. That's always optional. You can always just weave those in at the end. So I'm going to work a single crochet border here. I'm going to work all the way down one one uh, single crochet in each stitch there. And then I'm going to work up this side. I'm going to create a buttonhole on one of these sides. So I'll meet you back. I'm actually going to meet, I'll meet you back once I come around here. So we're going to create the buttonhole. We're going to work all the way down across here and back to where we started. Okay, so you continue on. I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll meet you when I get back around, when I get around to here and we'll, we'll work up this side a little bit together and then I'll show you how we create the buttonhole. So I'll see you soon. Okay, so I'm at this edge now, so I'm just going to start to place evenly spaced single crochets along this black edge. Now because I've used a hook that was quite large for my yarn size, I'm going to get little holes in here, but I don't mind that too much. Okay, so I'm just going to work up along the side here. Until I get to the end of this first side. So I'm working up towards where I'm going to create my buttonhole. You can create it on either, you know, either side, it doesn't matter, but I'll show you on this first side. So we're just still single crochet all the way up that side, and I'm right on the corner there. And now, depending on the size of your button, you'll, cr you'll make a little chain across the top here. Okay, so I think two for me is going to be fine, and then I'm going to single crochet back into the other side. So let me just check I've got enough room for my button there. So just double check that you can fit your button through your buttonhole. That's not too tight and not too loose. And then I'm going to start working down the other side. 
So working in my tail on this side. So it's just a matter of working one single crochet in sort of evenly spaced proportions down that side. So I'm going to keep working across and then obviously we're going to come across here up and around. So on this side you'll just go straight across the top there down and back to where you started. So I'll meet you once I get back around there. So yeah hopefully you'll find working across here it's just you know just as you would the same in this um, you know this is going to be covered by this okay so keep on working around and I'll meet you once I've done the same and see you shortly okay so I've made my way around I'm just going to slip stitch into that first stitch to join now you could do an invisible finishing stitch there I'm not going to because it's in black and it's you know not super obvious so you could do that if you know what that is you could do an invisible stitch there oops where's my where's my scissors oh there <laughs> I'm just going to tidy up these ends as well that I've sewn in there we go and yarn over pull through and just leave a little bit of tail to weave in there okay so I've also got my white tail that I'll weave in as well so I'm gonna just go ahead and do those off camera and then we'll come back and we'll sew on our little collar pieces and our bow tie onto the front so I'll catch you shortly okay so my ends are all neatly woven in there oh, I've got one little thread just hanging out there so I'll snip that off okay so there's my um, there's my finished tuxedo portion so now we're going to sew on these little collars so first you'll want to weave in that tail end so how I I also use like I did before with the the bow I also use this as an opportunity to shape the corners how I want them to be so you can do the same so I just tidy up my corners and get a nice point there so you'll go ahead and do that on both of these little little collar pieces before you start to sew them on so I'm going to do that um, finish that off off camera and we'll sew on the the uh, collar together okay so I've got my two little neat triangles there and now we're going to just place them where we want them to be now you can kind of decide how you want them to be what I do is I tend to just follow this edge here but you could you could bring them down into the white a little bit if you wanted to that's also fine just to make them a bit more obvious but then you're just going to basically once you've decided where you want them to be you're basically just going to sew them on and and also if you follow this line it makes it nice and simple actually I'm going to come around this side put them this way and what I do to sew this on is I just take the front the front loop of each of the stitches and that just helps it to sit up a little bit it's a little bit hard to see in this in this black I apologize for that but I just take the the front loop so front loop of that stitch and then the front loop of a corresponding stitch and again it's that's really tricky to see in black on camera so I'm just going to go ahead and do that for each of the sides now if you're sewing it on a little bit off center you you would just start to move across here okay that's that's entirely up to you so I'm gonna finish off doing this so I'm just gonna sew across and then weave in this tail end once I'm done so I'm gonna do that on both sides 
and of course you'll do the same and I'll meet you shortly okay so I've got my two little collar pieces sewn on there and now we're going to sew on the bow tie in between so you want the little collar pieces just to sit sort of above the bow tie like it does on a, on a tuxedo so basically you'll just take one of your tail ends and we'll do we'll use both of the tail ends to sew this on so it goes on nice and symmetrically so you'll just find your center point there where you want it to go on and work through into the back now you can you can do this sewing however you like but what I tend to do is I go back through and then I come up into the side of the bow okay so just on right on the side of the center piece there so it's not it's not going to be too obvious and then I go back down just on the side of the center there and pull that through and then I'll do that a couple of times just go up up and through and I'll do that with each tail end so both sides of the bow tie get sewn on nice and firmly so I'm going to finish that off camera and I'll see you shortly okay so once I've been up and through a few times with the, the sewing on the bow then I just bring my two tail ends together at, at the center so if they've if they haven't landed right next to each other I tend to just bring them close together at the back here so I can then tie a simple knot make that nice and secure at the back one and two and then I'm just going to shorten these tails because I've got plenty there and then I'll just do a little weave into the back just being careful not to show it through at the front so you'll just have to I just do a little weaving through and what I tend to do is I come up through the the bow again like this so I'm not showing any of the red through the through the the white so I'll just come up on the side and just go into the into the back of my the back of my bow there and then I'll snip off those tail ends underneath the bow and then of course all that's left is sewing on our button where we want it to be so this is where you'll want to check on your cat okay so yeah so you'll check that on your cat and you'll work out where you want your button to be so I've got my buttonhole on this side so I'm going to sew it onto the other side now the best thing is to try it on your cat and and work out where you want it to be I'm going to go with five. I'm just going to work out the measurements. I've got two in the center there. So I'll need, I'm going to go about one centimeter from the end. So you'll, you'll mark that where you want that to be. And then you'll just sew on your button. So I'm just going to use a, a little bit of black here. So you can use thread, you could use a piece of your yarn. I'm going to just use a piece of my yarn if I can get it through this, this needle. Yes. Okay. And then you'll just sew on your button. So it's as simple as that. Super cute little tuxedo bandana. So I'm going to finish off sewing on this button and weaving in the tail ends off camera. So I'll, I'll do that and I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I've got my button sewed on there. And now, finally, our other buttons. 
that we're going to add and that they're, they're kind of optional you don't have to add those you know the suit the shirt buttons but I'm going to see what this looks like with these little red hearts do I do them with red hearts or do I do black I don't know let's let's sew on the red hearts and see what they look like so you you um yeah you this is like I said this is optional this part here I'm going to sew on these two little red hearts and uh yeah so after that we'll be finished so I'll come back once I'm done okay so there it is all finished I don't know what I think about the little hearts but Anyway, we'll leave them there for now. Maybe I'll change them to black. But uh, thanks so much for being here. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please uh, send along your photos to catventurous.community at gmail.com or catventurous.crochet on social media. So, I uh, yeah, I would love to see your photos. So, once again, please like, share, and subscribe if you appreciate this tutorial. And we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Good one, Bye. You want to get down? Bye. Yeah. Bye. Good girl. Good girl. Ready? Want should we do one more? <laughs> yeah, you're cute. Are you mad?